All right, so I'm gonna have some water that I'm heating, and there's a reason why I'm heating it, because when I filter this, I want the water to have a lot of energy. So all I'm doing is gonna add some more water, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a solution. So I've got water H2O, and all I'm gonna do is add some table salt, all right? Now you see, people get confused. They think salt is only one compound. Now this is salt, but this is sodium chloride, all right? In fact, um, table salt is what we use here. So I'm going to add some table salt. Now, table salt, as you're going to see here, let me pour it in a uh, filter paper, or at least in a glove here. So I got, a, I got a dark glove, and if I pour some salt in my glove, you can see there's a, clearly a solid there. And flat. In fact, the reason why it's white is because light is reflecting off of it. You may say, well, why do I actually see it? All right, the reason is, is because, well, salt, table salt, sodium chloride, is a crystalline structure. We're going to learn about this, but here is its actual crystalline structure. Okay? And you see the different colored uh, circles or beads model of the crystalline structure. One is sodium, one is chloride ions. Okay? And they stick together because they have strong attractions for each other. Now, what I'm going to do is, if you notice, it can see this crystal because light hits it and bounces back. Now, why does it bounce back? Because you've got all of these what? Solid atoms in close area, correct? All right, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this salt and I'm going to pour it in here. Okay, and you can see it getting cloudy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir. And with a little bit of heat, the heat is essentially giving the water a lot of energy. I'm going to stir, and I'm making salt water solution. What's happening to the solid? Yeah, it became a, what kind of mixture? Aqueous. Another word for that is, yeah, homogeneous. The first drop is the same as the last. What happened to the solid? How come I don't see it anymore? It dissolved. But what does that really mean? Well, it means this solid, okay, broke apart into the individual ions in water. Now, if the individual ions in water are separated, are these little things tiny? Can we see individual ions? The answer is no. When they stick together to form a crystal, Light can't get through. When they separate into individual particles, which water helps to do, you can't see them. Okay? So what happens is water will surround the negative ion with the positive part. We call it molecule ion attractions. And the water, other part of water, will surround the, the uh, is that purple or blue? I can't tell. The blue one, notice different orientation. So what happens is water is charged. It's going to be able to get into the crystal, and it basically gets inside the crystal and says, oh, I like this one, and it surrounds it, and it pulls it away. And it, this one comes off, and let's get another water molecule here. So another water molecule comes in and finds this one on the outside and just kind of gets inside of it, and here we go. Somehow, it's hard to do with one hand but the water pulls it away into what? Individual particles that we can't see. So if these particles are tiny, and if you look at filter paper, filter paper is basically a piece of paper that has a lot of tiny holes. Now, of course, I punched holes in it. No filter paper looks quite like this. But filter paper, if you were to magnify it thousands and thousands of times, you would see little porous openings. Now, big salt molecules can't get through these openings. But individual particles can. So the point of the, this demo is we cannot filter out the ions because they're about as small as the what? The water itself. We can only filter out big crystals that connect it to each other. So back to this demo. All right, so I've got my hot water. Okay, I'm going to bring this down, all right, and of course, bring that down over here. Maybe I can see that. I'm going to take this box away, 
Hopefully I don't burn myself in the same time. All right, there's my water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna perform a hot filtration. It sounds like a new dance move, okay? But here it is. Here's my filter paper. And I'm gonna take a piece of filter paper. As you probably have done in some labs, I'm gonna fold it over once. Fold it over twice. Sometimes they rip the ends to know which side is which. I put the filter paper in here. Open one ending up. And I'm gonna take the hot filtrate and I'm gonna pour it through. And what we're gonna get, hopefully, well definitely, is we're gonna get the same clear fluid that we've been, that we had before. Now why? Not because I say so, because you can't filter out the ions. All right, the filtrate is gonna be as clear or as, um, have the same amount of salt water as what I started with. I can't filter out the ions. So what's coming through here, guys? Just the water? Water and the, the individual ions from the salt. They're going right through because they're just as small. And the reason why I heat it is because it takes some time to get through the filter paper. And as I'll show you in a second, there's no salt being collected. You can't filter out a solution. Even though it's a physical separation, okay, the size of the individual particles are too small. Okay, they're going to go right through my filter paper. So here's my filter paper, although it's not drawing the size. They'll go, oh, they're going to go right, uh, uh, get it, uh, oh, right through, okay? Because the water will go, uh, uh, uh. Oh, right through. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. So as we're filtering away, we should be starting to see some solids appearing. We're not going to see any, obviously. Okay. We're not seeing any solids appearing because you can't filter away salt from water. If you could, it would be an easy way to get fresh water from salt water. We can't do it that way. What would be a one way we could do it? How could I separate the salt from the water? Yes, I could boil what? I could boil the water. What's going to leave? The water's going to leave, and we're going to have what behind? The salt. Coming back two hours later, you may look at your filter paper and say, well, it looks like very clearly this ring is sodium chloride, and it is, and you may be first to suggest that maybe that this filter paper does separate some ions since I see some sodium chloride. But this is not the result of filtering the ions out of the water. This is the result of water that was left in this filter paper evaporating. And when it evaporated this physical property, we separated the mixture and the water left by evaporation and left the salt behind. So what you're seeing here might be evidence that we can separate ions by filtering or salt from the water by filtering or sugar from the water by filtering but no what this is is showing a different separatory process which is evaporation and we can ev by evaporating the waterway separating the water from the salt in a physical process we are left with just one substance which is the sodium chloride so you can see that white compound is the sodium chloride and it's not being filtered away out of the water it's the result of evaporation which is another technique okay so clearly it looks like wow this could be it this is this is the reasoning this can happen but no it's just the evaporation of the water left behind and of course it leaves behind the water all right so again example we cannot filter water from salt or sugar in a aqueous solution by filtering this is the result of evaporation